Thank you so much for joining us for this skill boost on data visualization for LGBTI communication. My name is Svetlana Zaharova and I'm uh, ILGA Europe Programs Officer and basically I coordinate a strategic communication program. And this webinar is part of this program, which is quite, uh, quite a big one and includes different funding and learning opportunities for LGBTI activists in Europe and Central Asia. And also today with me, uh, three amazing colleagues uh, show our strategic communications consultant who worked with us for many years. Brian, our amazing communications director, and Mehmet, our amazing communications officer. Um, before I will pass the word to show, I just will mention that this session is going to be pre-recorded. So if you have any security concerns, please turn off your camera and keep it uh, off during the entire session and change your name. And also I would like to let you know that we will have some time for questions and answers. So if you have any questions and answers, you can send it into the chat box or you can send it as a message directly to me and I will make sure that um, all the questions are, are answered. And now I'm passing to Sho. Sho, you're very welcome to start. Thanks, Svetlana. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Sho walker Kono. I'm a communications coach for activists, um, and I've been working with ILGA Europe uh, and helping provide coaching and training to ILGA Europe's members uh, for three years now. Um, and so if you if you haven't been part of one of these skills boosts before, um, you will get these slides. So you don't need to worry about asking every five minutes whether we're going to send the slides to you or send the recording to you. If you've registered registered for this session, that means we have your email and you will receive the slides and the recording afterwards. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you had missed any of the previous skills boosts, we had sessions on crisis communications during COVID. We had a, a video expert come in and help people make homemade campaign videos. We did graphic design using free tools, and no design skills. We did skills boosts with kind of the, a day in the life of a press officer. Uh, and we just finished um, the uh, effective fundraising campaigns in times of crisis. So, uh, so there's the, the, the materials from those five skills boosts previously are all still available uh, to you. Um, and uh, what we'll be doing today is uh, a bit of an introduction to data visualization. And I'll also explain what exactly we mean by that. Um, I should have also said, if I'm going too fast or I say something that's not, that, that's a bit of jargon that you need explained, please just type, please, please do type that in the chat box too. Um, I tend to speed up when I get excited about a topic. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, today we're going to be doing a bit of in inspiration and introduction to data visualization, thinking about how we find the data, how we find the story in the data, and then how we create a visual, a very basic visual, which we might, hopefully will be, even be able to do one together today. Um, and then if you're familiar with the skills boost format, this is what we always do. If, if that's all you're interested in, you just wanted to taste it, just wanted to sort of see what this is about, then absolutely fine. We're really glad you came today. But if you would like to have a go, if you would like to try and make a draft yourself with some of the ideas and, and tips that we'll give you today, then you can send us your assignment, your draft. And in is it two weeks time or three weeks time, anyway, on the 6th of June, same time we'll have a follow-up session and these follow-up sessions are generally a bit smaller so you get a bit more time to actually ask have your own dilemma and your and get feedback on your design and what you're doing um and, and then our team will sort of give you some uh more tailored uh feedback um yeah so setline has put some of the links in the chat box there um and then, uh, and then, like we might, like we did with the video and the graphic skills boost before, uh, if you're comfortable and you've created some uh, visualizations based on this, then uh, maybe we, we might do a little bit of a showcase of them as well. Um, so that that's what this skills boost is going to contain. So I hope people were expecting that. Um, maybe just one thing to be clear: how is this different from the graphic design skills boost that we did last year? Um, we're not going to be really like picky or like really pedantic about what is technically a data visualization, what is an infographic, 
what is a chart and what is not like what is a d- another kind of graphic um that's not we're not here to be really sort of like picky about exactly what is data visualization visualization um the the main difference from last year's skills boost on making graphics is that that session was quite focused on like the design skills of layout composition using iconography or fonts and photography in graphics for any kind of graphic and you can see on the screen some examples of what the participants made uh in last year in that skills boost whereas today is just is taking most of those same skills but going a bit more specifically on how do you translate information and data into a kind of story or or some kind of point visually does that i hope that makes sense but please ask questions if uh, if it doesn't make sense so it's absolutely not essential it doesn't matter if you didn't do the graphic design skills boost last year or you have no graphic design skills um uh but I definitely, if you did miss it, I definitely do recommend checking out the recording and some of the resources that came out of it. Okay, so before we go on, I, as Svetlana said, if, if you have any security concerns, we do ask that you turn your video off because this session is being recorded. If, if you don't have security concerns, I would personally love it if you did have your video on just because it's nice to see some humans rather than just uh, gray zoom boxes <laughs> and also so we can see your face so that even if you don't type in I can see whether people are looking confused or outraged or find something funny <laughs> um but so yeah if you if it is possible to turn video on if you don't have a issue with that that's thank you Iona that's and, and a little wave that's always it's always reassuring to know there's humans <laughs> logged into this session uh thank you um and uh, for everybody, could you just type into the ch- chat box just so that we make sure that we're like actually answering the needs that you have? Like, why are you here today? Is it you've seen some data visualization you wanted to try yourself? Uh, or do you have data? You, you have a, a data set on an issue that you would like to communicate visually um, or some other reason? So, uh, yeah, I'll just get, give you a minute or two um, to type into the chat box. So Iona has already typed in here to train my young team on data and communication. Great. Um, so yeah, please, uh, please uh, let, let, let us know why you're here, what you're, what you're interested in, what the reason for you turning up today is um, so that I, so that we know to, to, to represent it. Oh, uh, sympathy is Bart for your motorbike accident. And again, that's a very valid reason for not having your video on. <laughs> Um, brilliant. Okay, so we've got loads of people coming in talking about data visualization, working with LGBTQI related data set. Great. Yeah. So with that the point of the session is we'll try and get specifically into like what's the challenge for LGBTI activists and data. Um, interesting. You got you got data from a survey and you want to be able to analyze and communicate it. Some people are just here because they're curious. Or some people have very uh, very advanced questions about things like R Studio. Maybe just, just to set your expectations, we might not get to that today, um, but hopefully it will still be useful for you. Because um, I, I think most of us won't know what R Studio is. Um, uh, nice, so, so someone, some people have given specific examples of having data on Italian prep users. Um, and some people have sort of like the, uh, have kind of m and work. Okay, so there's a lot of a lot of people's um, inputs now. So I'll I'll make sure to to we'll make sure to check that and represent that as well. Um, great. Okay. Uh, so we've got a lot of people on today. Um, so we just wanted to give you a little bit of like in, before we get into the nuts and deep the step by step of how we do it, how we find this find the data, find the story, create the visual, uh, just to get some inspiration. Um, um we were going to have someone uh come come along to speak to you today unfortunately they've not been able to so minami funakoshi who's a graphics journalist for the reuters news agency uh last year won the um there's a thing called information is beautiful which is kind of like a i definitely recommend checking it out it's a website that showcases amazing data visualization uh, and they won this they won the information is beautiful award for this visual story about uh, gender and language last year um and so uh they they unfortunately weren't able to make it today but they did sort of send in some answers to some questions that i was going to ask i'm not going to read it all out 
but I'll show it on screen and so you can read it later if you're interested in the slides. But I think just one thing that it would be uh, interesting to, to step through is from the, like, the reason that they did this story, which um, actually I should be able to uh, show you on screen. Yeah, great. I just checking that this is showing up on screen. Svetlana or Mehmet, give me a nod. Yes, thank you. Um, so it's it's a beautiful um, uh, uh, it's a beautiful sort of interactive story about the way that different languages around the world uh, have like have gendered language because obviously uh, so many different languages have different ways of putting masculine, feminine, or other ways of gendering their language. Um, it's really beautifully presented, it's really interesting. It comes from a personal perspective. So Minami is a non-binary uh, journalist who grew up in J Japan and Malaysia, now working in the United States, and was really interested by the fact that um, uh, when, when they would sometimes, sometimes be misgendered uh, differently, depending on whether someone was misgendering them in English or in Japanese, where, where there are different pronouns or you use pro you use gendered pronouns at different parts of the sentence and when you're referring to myself or another person um so i definitely recommend reading it if, you, if you've not if you've not read it before it's something i think all of us are very interested in um but that that was the reason for that story um and i also asked what their top tips uh i'm just checking in case there's questions uh yes access to the full work anywhere nadia's asked so the link at the bottom uh, hopefully you should be able to see it at the moment. If not, it'll be it will be in the slides. Um, you'll be able to read read the full article from Minami uh, 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 there. Great. Um, so Minami's top tips. I'm I'm sorry again that they weren't able to be here to 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 to, to give this to you in person. Um, was not starting with the data, but starting with a question. So think about what's the question you're trying to answer. Um, thinking about when data visualization is helpful and when it's not. Uh, charts and graphics are good if you're trying to show a clear pattern or an anomaly or a relationship between different factors and variables. They give the example of gender and pay. Um, but if, they, if the data doesn't have that, then sometimes it's not a great candidate for a visualization. Or maybe the point you want to make is so simple you can do it in a concise sentence. I think they give the example of one in X people die of X, maybe that's already clear enough and you don't need to uh, complicate it or you don't need to try and like to make it uh, visual. Um, and also, and I think this is why I wanted uh, to showcase Manami's uh, story on gender and language, it's not using loads of numbers, right? It's not, it's not what maybe we think of as like a bar chart and lots of dots and lines going everywhere. It's using a different kind of data, you know, the way that different languages are constructed and, sh and how you can show that visually on screen. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, so gender and language doesn't have any numbers. The data is, is, is the languages. Uh, and they also said visualizations, including illustrations, can be good for conveying emotions or explaining how something works. So always, even if there's no hard data, it's worth asking if there's a potential for visual storytelling. Um, no, thank you, thank you, Lala. That's uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's always good. It's always a good thing to think about. Um, okay. And I also asked uh, whether there was any um, specific uh, specific uh, tips for LGBTI activists. Uh, and they made a good point, which is that one of the things that you might want to be thinking about is how there is such a lack of good data on queer people. It's something uh, you might have seen Ilga Europe be, has been talking about a lot recently with the intersection series, which you can also see uh, on the homepage. Um, maybe we can get a link to that as well. Um, so maybe you could use the data that does exist to, uh, to visualize and bring more attention to the fact that we need more data on queer people because so much data only, for example, collects in male and female uh, categorizations. Um, uh, do we have time? Yeah, yeah, we have time to show. The top animation in this story, this is obviously a very advanced <laughs> graphics, but 
what basically what this whole story is doing is just trying to visualize a huge number a million plastic bottles being created every being sold every minute and just trying to find a way to show you that kind of scale when just writing the number of a million so writing a million plastic bottles as a sentence would be would, wouldn't mean as much to us so showing this visually in this this is a very advanced obviously computer graphics but there's no reason why we wouldn't be able to do something with with much simpler techniques to show scale um and that's that's something that um uh, minami talked about as well this this, this goes on for quite a while so <laughs> I, i'll go back a million plastic bottles is a lot um so maybe she, uh, they said maybe you can use a similar approach to communicate the impact of certain data points you're trying to emphasize uh the visualizations are great at showing patterns in a concise way that make a lasting impact but you might want to combine that and use words photos videos and other formats to tell a detailed nuanced personal story um which is obviously really important when you're telling the story of people uh, of lgbti people uh brilliant thank you Mehmet. let's put the link to that intersections uh work in the chat uh, i'm just checking if there are any other uh questions brilliant um okay i'll just pause in case i was going really fast and there's other questions or points that people wanted to make okay so finding the data um many of you will have access to your own data um some of you will know where you can find data that's specific to your country um i'm just showing on the screen a few examples of data sources that are international it just in case like ilga europe your work is with a is with lgbti people in general or or a specific community across borders um so we we found this quite interesting either having uh flags of equality which is a, a, a sort of like a project that actually took the ilga europe rainbow map and turned it into a different kind of visualization uh and database there's our world in data which has kind of global data sets a bit more on the kind of development srhr side but also interesting data about human rights across the world that's the example i've got on the screen about where conversion therapies are banned around the world um there's the fra survey which that intersections work was about um which has uh, a section with specifically about lgbti data um i've also just put in there just remember that you can also get data from things like google trends um i put as an example there for anyone who's familiar with the there's been a controversy in the netherlands uh, here, uh, here in the netherlands about uh sex education comprehensive sex education uh and uh and and people attacking that for having lgbti content in it and so you can sort of see oh when did a certain term get searched for more when did some suddenly obviously some groups instrumentalizing or attacking certain terms mean that there was a rise in google searches for it so just just to sort of like prompt you to think about uh uh about where there are different data sources you can work with that don't necessarily rely on like government statistics i can see a few people actually linda also putting examples of themselves in the in the text box that's great please uh please do shout if uh, if you got examples like that it's really useful um so uh yeah so actually are the example we're going to work with today is not not based on sort of like government statistics and and just numbers alone um so maybe we could have a quick introduction to the rainbow europe map which is the example from ilg europe's uh, data that uh, we're going to be using uh, to work on today um so mehmet would you be able to explain briefly what is the rainbow europe map um i've got it up on screen at the moment of course um thanks show so most of you must know rainbow map already but just to summarize what really we do with with the project in terms of data visualization it's a map and index actually and we rank uh, european countries 49 european countries on a scale between um 0% and 100% 0% means um gross violations of human rights and discrimination but 100% means respect of human rights and full equality and we rank the countries on the basis of legislation and policies 
that have a direct impact on LGBTI people's human rights. We have 74 criteria under seven categories, and each of these criteria has a different percentage of weight that adds up to the 100%. So we produce two files. Um, one of them is Rainbow Index. It shows a list of countries and which criteria they fulfill under each category. And we have the rainbow map, as you see on the on the screen. It's It shows the map of Europe with each country in a color based on their total score. So this is what rainbow map and index is. And yes, to you, show. Brilliant, thanks Mehmet. So uh, yeah, so ho hopefully that just, just to explain what is this uh, data set that we're using as the example today. Um, but I guess what, what we're interested in is like, how then, okay, you've got this data set and we're now kind of using this as the example for the participants today to use. So how do we, how do we find stories within it? Um, I've got some examples on the page of like media stories that came out of this, uh, out of this work. Um, but um, it'd be interesting to hear your perspectives on Okay, so you're looking at this gigantic data set. If you mentioned you know, 70 criteria, 49 countries, you know, where do you even start to try and tell try and tell a story um, from within this data set? How, how did you do it this year, for example? Um, there's a vast data, as you say, and with with lots of background information, we collect data from 49 countries through our membership. Uh, we have country experts who are activists, human rights defenders, sometimes uh, lawyers, etc. And we uh, verify all this data before publishing all the results. But we focus on the dynamics of the ranking and scores compared to the previous years. For example, Malta has been on the number one for the last eight years. It's so this year it was not news. What we focused was some uh, which countries have moved up and down. We also identify trends and overarching issues. Um, so we look at the list of the allocated or deducted points for all the countries and we try to identify which criteria are the common areas that uh, the countries. Uh, are uh, working on. So based on these findings, we create our messages, press releases, and social media campaigns. Um, and Brian will talk about actually, so this is what, how we work um, in general, but Brian will give some examples about how we worked on this year's map. Sure, thanks, Macbeth. Um, so, as Mehmet says, we look at the dynamics of, of what's happening and um, where countries are and how they're moving. So, the first story that really jumps out always to people is the top 10, where people are going in terms of moving forward. Um, over the last few years, there hasn't been huge movement, but this year there was a big jump for several countries, and that was where we zoned in this year in terms of telling a story. Uh, so we focused on Spain, Iceland and Finland, which jumped six places in the ranking. Um, they were the biggest jumps uh, in the uh, towards the top 10. Um, and both Spain and Finland, Finland adopted new laws on legal gender recognition based on self-determination, um, which changed their positions immensely compared to last year. Um, Greece also adopted a ban on IGM uh, for intersex minors. So um, what we took from this was we, we decided to take the fact that Spain and Finland had jumped six places and to tell a story that we wanted to uh, tie to messaging that counteracted the narrative, uh, the anti-trans narrative that's uh, happening at the moment in Europe. The idea that everyone is anti-trans or that there are major swathes of people who are anti-trans and that um, trans uh, rights are on the wane and going down. Uh, when we see Spain and Finland jump six points with very progressive legislation that is self 
determined so about self-determined uh, legal gender recognition. So we decided to take that as a story and to take that as a story that is uh, at odds with the, the dominant narrative um, and that is a positive narrative, a positive framing. So our, our message was that trans and intersex rights are at the forefront of positive change for LGBTI people in Europe. Um, we were saying that despite um, intense, intense anti-LGBTI attacks, in several countries, equality is still advancing. So we see on the rainbow map that equality is still advancing. We see and we can pull out lots of stats from the map to show advances um, and that the, the work of uh, politicians who uh, have the courage to stand up for equality of LGBTI people um, pays off and that the work of activists who uh, lobby and work towards uh, towards equality pays off. Um, and yes, the largest gains were for countries that introduced legal gender occupation using a self-determination model. So that was the story we pulled from the data this year. And um, uh, just, just to mention, there's an interesting discussion going on in the chat box about accessibility and things like uh, colorblindness and stuff like that. So I'm uh, really grateful. This is something actually I can't remember whether we included in the graphic design skills boost last year, but if not, we'll we'll include it again in these links. Uh, but I see someone's already put in a link to some uh, guidance and support for people who want to make sure their visuals are uh, as accessible as possible. Um, okay. Uh, so the other question I wanted to ask is, could you could you could you give our participants some ideas of stories that you think might be hidden in the data that could be interesting to be told visually? Um, I know you had some, uh, you had uh, three or four ideas already. Yes, Brian and I will give some glimpse of ideas. Um, we have an interactive website. It's rainbowurope.org, uh, where you can see all background data for each country or category on the map. Uh, you can compare countries under different categories or criteria. Um, Etc. There are a lot of interactivity on that website, and I was actually just responding to the accessibility of the colors. And uh, just to let you all know that we are currently working on a new website, um, and accessibility is one of one of our uh, goals to um, for the new website. So that was a really great feedback, and I'm sure we can create some uh different versions of the map on that new uh, website uh that will be more accessible um coming back to to the, the website and the data we publish all our data set for transparency reasons but also it's very useful for you know policymakers journalists activists etc um we at ILGA Europe, we only create a map and index to documents, um, but anyone can create more visualization from our data set. The first example I'm going to give is um, someone was on the chat, someone was talking about the UK. Um, it's very obvious uh, and a lot of people are talking about it on social media that the journey, the journey of the UK from number one to number 17 is an interesting story that can be visualized. The United Kingdom was the number one country on our country ranking in 2013 and became the 17th in 2023. Um, so on our website, you can see the old um, versions of the map and index, as you can see on the, on the screen at the moment. Um, so you can get the data from previous years and compare these data uh, per country. For example, the United Kingdom is a, is an interesting story, but you can do that on other countries as well. Brian? Yes. Uh, so the second story that we we talked about for, uh, taking from the map this year is rooted in the main uh, story we took from it, and that is the story of self-determination for trans people in Europe. So self-determination is only available in 
available in 11 countries in Europe, um, which can easily be seen on the Rainbow Europe website on the interactive model by choosing all countries and self-determination on the drop-down menu. So we're able to tell uh, when that happened, uh, how that's evolved over, over time. And then also with the rainbow map, we also have a, a document called the annual review, which is a, a narrative about what's happening in every country over the past year and past years, because it's published every year. So you can go to countries in that, look under uh, self or legal gender recognition and find what countries are considering uh, new legislation. So you can you can project forward as well. So uh, that's the second story we came, we we looked at. Perfect. Yes. Um, and, and just to mention that there's already someone's already had a go at this, right? You included this uh, example of someone already kind of taking the taking that information, making a slightly like a very pretty sort of stylized version of that to make a point in in a, in a graphic on Twitter. Um, it's really interesting. Exactly. Um, as you see, uh, it's actually the same map. Uh, but different visualization um, and that was a very um, the the map on the right side was a, a very um, strong message and uh, on Twitter when there was the discussion about Scotland's um, LGR law that was later blocked by um, the United Kingdom. The other example that I'm going to give from our rainbow map is um, so you can look at different um different criteria and create a timeline actually for example um uh, ban on uh forced uh, genital mutilations on intersex minors is uh, is actually a, a specific criterion on our map but we have actually a category of intersex bodily integrity when you look at that you will see that six countries have already banned igm um, and if you go to those specific countries pages on the Rainbow uh, Europe module, you will see when that law was adopted or when it, it came into effect, etc. You will see different uh, information about those countries banning IGM. So actually, we can always create a timeline of of these legislations in Europe. Similar thing can be done, for example, for conversion practices bans as well. And the last example, uh, uh, Brian will give another example now. Yes, but just to answer a couple of questions that I saw come up in the chat. Uh, the first question is, we only consider uh, a law legislation that's passed. Um, and we are uh, policies that have been put in place. We have, uh, we keep a constant eye on what's moving and changing as the year goes along. And we we update the map as or the information, the data set as we go along throughout the year. Um, and the other question is about the UK, whether it's moved up and down based on uh, introduction of negative laws or because it's not moving while other countries are doing more. And that's the second answer is more clear about what's happening in the UK. It's going down as other countries introduce better, uh, new and better legislation. So the final story that we came up was to, which is almost, it's, it's connected to the previous graphic we saw uh, from the person who, who posted on Twitter the, about um, LGR uh, across Europe. It is revisualizing the map based on different categories. So we do our country rankings based on a total score uh, that's calculated under seven categories. However, the online module shows a menu, as you saw, where you can choose different categories and get a new ranking for a country based on your selection. So for example, uh, Montenegro currently sits number 12 in the overall ranking. However, if you choose legal gender recognition as a category, you see they are in 30th place on the map. So 
what you can do is retell stories about the map based on the interests or the the story you want to talk about. So if you want to talk about conversion therapy in Europe, for instance, or if you want to talk about um, freedom of of um, assembly prides, uh, you can go in there and you can look at, at the data sets and you can uh, get a new visualization of where freedom of assembly, for instance, is uh, under threat or freedom of assembly is fully allowed. So you can you can uh, really kind of take a lot of different stories very simply from the data in that way. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I think that was that was really good to have those four examples. So just to show you again, sort of like showing the UK's drop as an example of showing comparison over time. Uh, the uh, looking at the intersex uh, conversion ban. So the the uh, uh, the inter, uh, the self gender recognition to show uh, which countries had introduced the ban. Um, and th that example, the uh, conversion practices ban. Uh, as an example, uh, and sort of using different categorizations to show to look at the rankings, but also the like the actual just individual country analysis in different ways. Um, that's not to say you like you have to do each of those things, but it's just to get you to think about these are different ways to look at the existing uh, data and potentially tell a more uh, visual story about that. I think mostly people who who are, have either had questions asked answered or they're asking questions about the about the um about the kind of like more the the composition of the rainbow europe map uh there is someone who has a question about the data set actually uh andre is asking do you have the data presented on map in machine readable format csv yeah i, I can answer that that yes that is uh that that is that does exist it should be if i can show you yeah it's in the top right hand corner of the map um uh the full report is in pdf so i think um maybe some of those questions that are about specifics about the rainbow europe map um mehmet and brian can answer in the in the, in the chat um I'm just checking whether there's any other questions about like the idea of the finding the story okay um so yeah we we we're obviously skipping across like there have been and there could be long sessions just on the rainbow map and how the how how the uh rankings were reached and what the different implications uh of that are um but we're going to try and uh uh we're going to try and sort of like get on to okay how do you have a go at this how 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 do you start to play around with creating your own uh in, in, infographics um so what what we're going to do now is think about like okay how do we actually create the visual then say you say you think you've got an idea for what story you want to tell from the data how, how do you actually create the visual we're not going to use super advanced tools out there we'll, we'll we'll give you the link to things like uh tableau public which is a free tool that you can use to do the more sort of advanced data visualizations but for most of the graphics that and the visualizations that you will want to create, we can actually use quite simple tools. And so we're actually going to use the same tools that we demonstrated in the Graphic Skills Boost last year, which is Adobe Express, which is good for some things, but we'll stick to the most popular one, which is Canva. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use Canva, which I've just got, a, uh, I just showed a little clip of how Canva has different, different templates and that it's quite kind of drag and dot, drop easy to edit uh, your, your, your own graphics. Um, and there is a, a it, it, like the, the, the main version of Canva is free. And I think you can still actually get the premium version for free if you are a registered nonprofit as well, um, as far as I remember. And correct me if, I've, if that's out of date information. Okay, uh, so what, um, what I'd be interested in is that some people already actually already on this is I'm going to be asking for your ideas for, for one we could do together now in uh, what we've got 20 minutes left so maybe in sort of like 10 15 minutes have a go together just to sort of like get used to what it what it takes to create a story 
I, I had a go the other day on Canva in just trying to create using the Rainbow Europe map. Just, is it possible to create a, uh, a basic graphic in, in 10 minutes? Uh, and so these are two of the ones that I had a go at. On the left, you can see an example of a kind of comparison chart, um, which you might be familiar with if you've like been on a, a company's website and they've been trying to show you, this is what the basic plan has, this is what the paid plan does, and this is what the expensive paid plan has. Um, but, but trying to do it for a country comparison between the rainbow, rap, ra rainbow map examples, for example. So I did a Benelux comparison between Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands. Um, and on the right, you can see a kind of more, I guess, a trend. So here, if the story here is we're trying to tell a bit of that story about the UK's fall from 1st to 17th that, uh, that, that Mehmet and Brian were talking about. Um, here's an example of a line graph, which they have templates for in the program, and you can just input your data and it creates a line graph automatically. Um, so, so for example, this is if the point you wanted to make was showing how a country has progressed or regressed on a specific criteria. Uh, and I made this really quickly. Um, and I thought one thing that would be interesting, you know, like the, the point that Minamine made on, can you bring your own kind of non-data uh, content and experiences and expertise in to illustrate the data and give the data more of a personal face. And so I just put an example here of like, okay, so when, when the UK fell in the rankings, what happened that year to potentially explain that fall um, so that you can kind of annotate it with your examples? That might be something that you're able to do, uh, do as well. Um, yes, uh, just I, I also think that your chem about uh, about the Netherlands self perception <laughs> of uh, of its LGBTI tolerance and work. Um, so uh, so th th those are just two examples that like I just had a go to, to prove. Oh, it is possible to have a go in in ten fifteen minutes. Um, so I'd be interested if anyone has if anyone's able to actually type in the chat box or is. What, 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 uh, wants to sort of volunteer. Has anyone got any ideas for data you'd like to tell a story about? Ideally, if we could do it with the rainbow map, it might be quicker for me to be able to access. I know some people at the beginning were talking about, for example, having your own national data on prep users. Um, but uh, I, I wonder if anyone looking looking at the rainbow map or having heard uh, Brian Mehmet's sort of like ideas for what 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 stories you've heard. Uh, has already some ideas um, about telling uh, a story. Okay, we've already got two. We've already got two sort of suggestions. Um, LGBTI rights in Turkey over time, Romania's progression, uh, rise and fall of Ireland and Britain, um, and uh, sex workers' rights laws. Maybe we can do. Let's. Well, well, uh, let LGBT rights in Turkey over time would probably look quite, and same with Romania, would look quite similar to um, uh, the trend one I did. Let's let's have a go at the rise and fall of Ireland, Britain, and then maybe one with sex workers' rights laws if we've got time, um, if that's all right. Uh, so if I go back to Canva, oh, sorry. Cool. So I'm in Canva now. So this is, I'm just also trying to show like how easy it is for a complete beginner to get into it. So I know what graph I need, because if we're doing a comparison of Ireland and Britain, probably, I mean, also Mehmet and Brian shout if you've got ideas as well for how to execute this, probably sort of like a line, a two line graph rather than a comparison chart. So we're not trying to compare them on specific policies at this moment in time. We're kind of, we're trying to compare them over the years. Um, so cool, we can go down here, it's a line graph. Let's pick a relatively simple template. These are all going to be uh, quite horrifically corporate, the templates in Canva to begin with, because obviously they're meant for people who are trying to show, uh, uh, trying to show uh, that they've increased the sales of their shampoo. Um, okay, so here, what are we doing? Um, Ireland and Britain. So that's just to show you that you can click on any bit of the of the graphic uh, and edit, edit it at, as text. Uh, I'm sure people have ideas about what the background <laughs> color and visuals should be. 
um, please keep typing into the check chat box. This is what we did with the graphic design skill boost as well. And uh, it was quite funny to see the wisdom of the of the crowd editing and telling me what I was doing wrong here in the chat box. Um, so there's some text that we could have here for context maybe. And you can see here the source that we could maybe list. Um, when we click on the line graph chart, uh, it would it gives you the option on the left, you can see in the data box. It's a very simple, this is not gonna have like, this is not gonna work if you've got a, a Google sheet with like loads or an Excel sheet with loads of data points in it, but just for a couple of simple ones, it, it could work. So if we've got, let's uh, not give ourselves too much work to do. Let's just go for the last three years. Um, and uh, we could do the percentages of two different countries. So for example, if we had, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this up so we get a chance to do an, a second one, but say we had uh, Ireland as um, uh, going from 60% to 65%. Uh, to 65% to 75%. That's probably not the real numbers. If, if anyone wants to get the real ones, they could. And then you could have the UK going from 75% to 70% to 65%, which would kind of fit with that story we were telling of, yes, other countries have... Oh, so again, this is a good point to think about what potential ways could people understand this story and what point are you trying to make? So someone asked that question already, right? Is it just that the UK is, is it that the UK is being overtaken by other countries or is it that the UK is uh, actually going down itself? And so that th this would be a great way to make that point. If, if, if the kind of the point you want to land, the impact you want to have with your graph is to say, yes, other countries are overtaking our country on this measure, but also just objectively, we've got, we, we, we've haven't, uh, we've regressed. And so that's, that's uh, this is a way that you can make that point. Um, so, yeah, so this would be two ways of doing that. And then again, once you've done that, you can make all sorts of, uh, all sorts of edits to it. We could edit the, um, we could edit the text here on the side, just checking whether, uh, yeah, who is it who suggested this? Bart, Bart Anderson. Um, or you could have um, points, points pointing to it. Um, so what's one we've used before? You can go into uh, Canva and go into elements uh, and say, I want a particular text box. So I click on that one, it comes up here. This is the example I used for uh, the uh, for the other one. And when I click in here, uh, I want to say, um, oh, sorry. this is always the peril of you doing trying to do a live, <laughs> live demonstration. Um, I want to have a uh, text in here that says, Uh, you know what what happened here what 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 was the reason for uh this country uh having this um uh this regression on the on the on the uh, on the chart okay i'm just to see whether anyone had any requests on this example um but basically i was just trying to show that like it's quite quick <laughs> obviously i need to actually have the um uh, have the information in, in in order to be able to do it someone else had a uh uh I had a request about sex workers rights laws. I met, met I think answered that that there's actually data from other research like SWER that might might have um, that information. Um, and who else did? Okay, Lala had comparing South Caucasus countries. Um, so I'll just stop, stop for a second just to see whether anyone had any questions on this already uh, or suggestions that they wanted to see demonstrated. People also, if you wanted to just ask it, you could raise a hand as well. And and maybe also actually, Matt, Matt and Brian, because you you've been using Canva to create to create these graphics. Any any things that you should that you wanted to mention about what people should be aware of? Any tricky things with creating 
uh, graphics, you, uh, data visualizations on Canva, people should know about um, uh, any, any tips we should give people before we move on to the next step? Um, what I would say is with Canva, because we use Canva quite a lot, um, that uh, you mentioned earlier on that these look very corporate. Um, take yeah. the, the great thing is that you can just take something and with a bit of creative thinking, take that corporate look away from it and add your own logos, your own imagery, your own elements to it and your own you can change fonts, et cetera, to make things look uh, less corporate and more like your own uh, work and your own reflection, your own brand. If you have a, an organization with a logo, et cetera. Um, there are many different ways of, of working with data. You can do all sorts of charts. You can do all sorts of graphics um, and they're all there. All you have to do is search like a comparison chart, et cetera, in, 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 uh, the elements part of it. Um, and what else is I going to say? A, yeah, Canvas about is about experimentation. So I, you know, I, it's it's a, a really easy to experiment with uh, platform. So you can, yeah, I think take your time with it, figure out how the the element works, and then and then play around with design. So put in your, your stats first and then play around with how it's going to look in design-wise. Great. Um, I would say um, quickly, um, keep it simple. Uh, have maybe, especially for this uh, exercise, but in general as well, have only one message in your mind and focus on that. Um, for example, when we were working on Ireland and UK, you can give that message already on the on the visual saying how UK is slipping down compared to Ireland. It's a very simple message on top of your on uh, visual, for example, that can be very helpful. Also, data. Uh, when you show your data, use the colors which uh, have um sense and um like a message uh, like a color can be the message data can be the message text can be the message they all make sense like you for example you should choose a color for ireland and uk uh, based on a, um, a specific idea or the score of the country and putting a, a specific um, color that makes sense for example on the rainbow map we use red and green uh, because there's a uh, there's a traffic uh, lamp idea that the, the general society has. Red is uh, worse and green is uh, better. So that's why we use that idea that you should uh, also play with. And um, I see we've had a couple of people make suggestions. I think it may, might be interesting to spend a minute to, to investigate. So Inez has said, interested in doing a comparison between the rainbow map and the EU LGBTI survey in order to make my country reflect about how we still need to progress in LGBTI, LGBTI education. Um, I don't know whether, Inez, whether you're able to like speak on microphone or you're willing to speak on microphone, but so I'd be interested to know what is the point then you would want to make uh, um, in, in that graphic? Um, like what, what, would, what would you, before we get onto what you want, what you wanted to show, what's the kind of point you'd like to make? Okay, hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I would like to, yeah, to do that comparison because I feel that we still have the mentality that we don't discriminate and our country does not discriminate but i still feel that for example we don't have much education about lgbt community and i thought it would be easier for me if i have it when i was younger so i feel that i need to just show that we still have work to do although we have a good position in the rainbow map because when i saw the results i was happy with it but i still 
feel that a point has to be made. I don't know if I'm. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, and I think, it's I think, because I, of it. But I, I feel that I'm privileged. Uh, in Portugal, we don't feel. It's like we have some histories about discrimination, but are not like that. How do you say it? Uh, there are worse uh, um, situations than the Portuguese ones. So, but yeah, I still need to prove my point. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think what would be interesting, so it'd be interesting, I would love it if you did have a, try and have a little go at maybe doing this, doing this graphic so we could talk about it in the follow-up session. Um, yes, but, but my, my... I, don't, I had a lot of ideas. So <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you did. If I, 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 like you said two weeks, to do the, the briefing? Well, that's why I was going to suggest, is there a way to simplify this? Because I wonder mm -hmm. if you're trying to make a point that is like, yes, we have this good, yeah. have this good position. I, I, I was also thinking about, sorry, I didn't. Uh, can you repeat? You, you failed a little bit. Oh, sorry. I was going to say like, my, my first instinct is that maybe there's a way to simplify the point you're trying to make. Because mm -hmm. even, even if there wasn't visualization and data going on, there are quite a few steps in that sentence that you said, like, yes, we've got this good ranking in the rainbow map, but look at this data in the EU survey. We still have a lot of way to go, and there are these issues we need to resolve. Yeah. My, my instinct would be that maybe actually it's not actually, you don't want to show the, the, the thing that you're trying to rebut. Maybe we should. Maybe you, you, you might want to just start with a visualization, working with the data, showing that there's a problem that you want to solve. Because um, otherwise, I, I can imagine maybe you're thinking, could I do a comparison showing this is where our rainbow map is, but actually this is from a different data source. The problem we have. I think there's, a, there's potentially just a simpler story to tell, which is just this is the this is the problem we want to solve with uh, mm -hmm. with the data of, of the issues that you have. But that, that would just be my instinct as all, also. No, no, you're right. The, because I was, <laughs> I, I was also thinking about doing a survey like in Portugal, trying to understand our zones, uh, where the, uh, how the discrimination works. If Imagine if South is more uh, discriminate more than, than East. I, I don't know, trying to understand how the discrimination works in Portugal itself. Yeah. I was trying, I was uh, thinking about uh, comparing these three uh, source of data, but yeah. I feel that, yeah, two, three weeks is a few time to do it. And no, know. thank you. Thank you, Inez. Um, so I, the thing I just say is that like for this first assignment, I'll, I'll go on I'll, I'll, in a second, I'll go on just to explain the assignment uh, more specifically. But for this one, in fact, maybe I should do that now. Um, I would not try to do some of what you were describing was talking about like you actually wanted to know more and you wanted to analyze it and you wanted to like understand between multiple sources of data to begin with as a, just a way of practicing data visualization as opposed to like data analysis and insight. Um, I would just try and find something that you already know you believe, something that you already know you want to say and find data to support it and find try and find a visual way to make that point rather than to say, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and uh, like, like learn or analyze or gain insight on something. And this is the same advice I've given to everybody if you would like to, to do this little challenge. Um, to create, create a draft sort of data visualization graphic yourself, I would recommend Canva, but if you already have other tools, you can. Uh, I, I use, I was thinking about using InDesign. Yeah, if, if you've got other tools, great. Um, but just, just to say to everybody, um, create something for yourself, try and make it as simple as possible. Try and think of something, as, as uh, Minami said, as Mehmet and Brian said, think of something you want to say and then find the data that sort of supports that and try to find a visual way to communicate that rather than trying to use it as a way to explore a topic. You're trying to make a point with this data visualization. Um, if you can send it to my email address um, or you could reply to Svetlana if that's who you got the invite for this session on to, that's fine. If you could do it by the day before the follow-up session, so the follow-up session is on, Monday the, on Tuesday the 6th, if you could send it to us by, the, by Monday the 5th, that would be great. You can send it just as a JPEG or PNG image file. 
Um, but if you could send as high resolution as possible. If you use Canva, I think there's a screen cap on the screen showing this, you can actually also send a collaboration link so that we can see actually how you edited it. Um, and that might mean that it's easier for us to edit it together with you live in the follow-up session. Um, and ideally, if you could also tell us an email, just give us a bit of context. Like this really only needs to be one or two sentences, but like, what are you trying to do? What are you trying, what story are you trying to tell with this graphic? And are there any things that you'd like us to improve about it? And then when, you, when you're ready, and if, if you're ready, uh, whether you give us permission to share this publicly, because we'd like to, you know, we'd like to give a bit of, uh, uh, you know, visibility. We'd like to, we'd like to praise your work. Um, and then if you do that, we'll give you the, we'll send you the link to the follow-up session on Tuesday the 6th, um, uh, which is also at the same time. I've already gone over the 60 minutes and I can see some people have had to leave. Um, so just a reminder, you will get the email with this slide deck, uh, and you will get the, uh, as, and so, which will have the explanation of this assignment in it again. Um, we did want to just plug the fact that all the other resources on strategic communications that Elgira provides, uh, a toolkit on framing, uh, the write-ups of the previous skills boosts, the, the, the resource hub where you can find uh, information in a kind of restricted sort of LGBTI activist only space or on lots of topics, not just communications. Um, and also the Facebook group where, uh, yeah, Svetlana is saying you'll get all the materials and details from uh, shortly. Uh, and also the Facebook group, which is where people voted on these topics in the first place and made these requests. So that's the reason why we've got this skills boost in the first place, because that's a place where people are raising questions uh, and discussing it. And it's only for, uh, it's just about communications and it's only for LGBTI activists. Um, I think we've already gone over time, so I won't ask you for, for more feedback, but um, just to answer Inez's question, uh, I think we are gonna provide this recording, aren't we Svetlana? Yeah. Um, so that's the, that's the end of this session. Um, and uh, I think people might need to leave. We did say it would only be 60 minutes, so we want to keep to that. But if there are people who want to hang about and ask a question, I think uh, we've got sort of five minutes or so to be able to answer any questions or if people were confused about the assignment or anything like that. But thank you everybody for turning up. Thank you uh, Svetlana for hosting and Brian and Mehmet for talking us through some cool ideas and cool things on the rainbow map. Uh, brilliant, thanks everybody. Uh, someone did have a question which was uh, a few more data visualization tools. Uh, the one I mentioned, uh, Andre, was uh, Tableau Public. So that's, a, I don't want to talk about, well, there's loads of ones out there that cost lots of money and that I don't think are really appropriate for what we're trying to do. Tableau Public is the one that I know of that's existed for quite a few years that is free to try um, and is a bit more advanced in terms of like being able to put in more complicated data sets and create more complicated visualizations. If you haven't tried it yet, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it as your first go, but just so you know, and the link to that will also be in the, uh, will also be in the slides as well. Thanks very much. Um, Nadia said, you won't be able to, you won't have it analyzed by 6th of June. That's okay. Um, if you are able to have a, just a go, I mean, maybe don't, don't put so much pressure on yourself to like, actually analyze and have the definitive completion of your data by 6th of June. But if you just want to like in a no pressure, very supportive small group, have some feedback on a little experiment and just have a quick, create a quick draft by the 6th of June, I would encourage you to do that. Always better to try something small and, and uh, like a test graphic first based on what you already know, what you already want to communicate. Um, so that you get some feedback on that before you then go away for weeks and weeks and uh, and work on a complicated data set. Um, Alexis, sorry, also, by the way, if Brian, Brian Mehmed or Svetlana, you have any thoughts on these questions, please do jump in. Um, someone has asked a question that Mehmed's already answered on the ranking of countries. Okay, great. Mehmed's already sent you a link if you want to get the ranking of countries based on separate uh, categories. Uh, and I... And Mehmet has also answered a question about uh, data collection in Azerbaijan um, and the reliability of different data, data sources. Okay, and I think I answered that question about different data visualization tools. 
Any other questions or last things people wanted to say before we log off? Um, thank you everybody for having so many quick ideas in this uh, in this 60 minute session. <laughs>